Hi, I'm Cheryl Atkinson. Welcome to Washington Unplugged. Former President Lyndon B. Johnson passed Medicare legislation in just a little more than six months from his inauguration. While his party held both houses in Congress, much like today, many felt his inside negotiations and political savvy sealed the deal. We'll have a discussion about how President Obama's health care cause could benefit from lessons of the president's past. But first, listen how recordings of LBJ tell the story of Medicare legislation. Execute. I will faithfully execute. The it was 1965. President Johnson had been elected in a landslide. He made Medicare, hospital coverage for the elderly, a top priority. I'll spend the goddamn money. I may cut back some tanks, but not on health. Johnson pushed Medicare and Medicaid like his life depended on it. He said that when John Kennedy died, it was up to him to make Kennedy a martyr. And the causes he picked for the martyred president are civil rights, Medicare, and Medicaid. Like today, Democrats held a majority in Congress, yet sweeping national health care was far from assured. One of Medicare's uh, toughest opponents was conservative Southern Democrat Wilbur Mills, who fretted about the cost and idea of socializing medicine. It was Mills who led the powerful committee that controlled the fate of any Medicare bill, and Mills who would blocked Kennedy's Medicare efforts. He didn't hesitate to raise the issue of cost with President Johnson. The only thing I'm concerned about, and I'm very frank about it, is that there's about $450 million in this bill out of the general funds of the Treasury for which you haven't budgeted to your, uh, your uh, situation. Uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll take care of that. I'll do that. Johnson prodded Mills relentlessly and finally won his support, offering, then giving him full credit. I want to ask Chairman Mills now to uh, make a brief statement concerning this program that his committee has worked out. Johnson knew he also had to woo conservative Democrats in the Senate, led by Dick Russell. In a phone call with newly elected Senator Ted Kennedy, Johnson told Kennedy it was important to control the message on cost, lest Senator Russell find out. My health program yesterday runs 300 million, but the fools had to go to projecting it down the road five or six years. And when you project the first year, it runs 900 million. But the first thing Dick Russell comes running in and say, my God, you've got a billion dollar program for next year on health, therefore I'm against any of it now. Do you follow me? Yeah, right, right. Now, we don't want to stir up any more hornets than we have to. He thought that if people knew the full cost of Medicare, it would never have passed. And he kept trying to lowball the estimates. There was powerful opposition outside of Congress, too, some of which was viewed as inevitable by the president and his key aide on Medicare. What are the insurance companies? Are they still raising hell? Well, Man. yes, I think they're going to go over to the Senate and raise uh, hell uh, on the uh, thing, because quite, uh, quite frankly, uh, there's no longer any room for for the private insurance companies to sell insurance policies for people over 65 when you take the combination of hospital care and the uh, physician service. Yeah, okay, I think that's wonderful. With Johnson's near daily involvement from start to finish, Medicare was passed and signed into law a little more than six months after his inauguration, July 30th, 1965.